It's a fluid situation in Oakland, to say the least. But as we tape this on Wednesday afternoon, Lane Kiffin still has a job. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you in the end zone presented by Sony. Clark Judge of CBSSports.com. Ian Eagle, of course, of CBS Sports, covers the NFL, calls games. Let's talk about Oakland and get into this situation here. A, and let's start with this. Are you surprised Lane Kiffin hasn't been fired yet? Um, no. I'm not, because I think Al Davis wants him to resign. And Lane Kiffin made it very clear he's not going to resign. He's not going to. And he says, it's not about money. Hey, who are we kidding? It is about money. <laughs> I mean, come on. Because if he resigns, he doesn't get paid. If he gets fired, he gets paid. So if you want to fire him, pay him and then fire him. But that's what this issue is all about. He's not going to walk off of there, and he's not going to be shamed into quitting. He's not going to quit. So if he's going to go, he has to be fired. I don't think Al Davis is going to fire him yet. Uh, Ian, how, how sad is this situation right now in Oakland? Uh, forget this week, right. but just in general with the fact that this used to be a once-proud franchise. Whether Lane Kiffin survives this whole situation is irrelevant to this discussion. This is a much deeper issue right now. And the fact of the matter is that Al Davis does not value the job of a head coach anymore because he, he goes after two different type of coaches. He either looks for youth, so a, an up-and-comer where he can squeeze two, three years out of, and then they move on, they use it as a stepping stone, or he looks for a coach who will just comply with all of his beliefs because they need the job, and there's no other place for them to go. And while I, I respect what Al Davis has done in his career, he was a visionary, he was an innovator, uh, he really was on the cutting edge of uh, evaluating talent, personnel decisions, and, and really putting together a team that other teams feared. Now his, his whole philosophy is outdated, and the shift of power in Oakland has to take place if this franchise is going to survive this. Uh, Clark, you were in the Bay Area for a long time covering yeah. the 49ers. Obviously, you got a chance to cover the Raiders there a a as well. Uh, how much does the NFL need Oakland to be successful? Yeah, that's a good question. I think the NFL does need the Raiders to be successful, like Major League Baseball needs the Yankees to be successful. You want to either love them or hate them. And right now, Nobody they're cares irrelevant. about them. Yeah, yeah. You, you, mm. you don't care about them. And, and Ian's right. It's a deeper issue. I mean, Lane Kiffin's only the, yeah. the, the surface Scratching here. Scratching the surface. Yeah. It's a deeper, deeper issue. This has gone on for years. I mean, Steve Sarkeesian was offered this job. He turned it down. I mean, you're an offensive coordinator in college. He turned it down, and that tells you something about what this organization's become. Yeah, and, and look, they used to be dysfunctional, but successful. Right. So somehow we would overlook that dysfunction because they won. They won championships. They won division titles. Now, they're dysfunctional and they're a failure. There's a lot of backbiting in that organization. There's a lot of mistrust. And it's really reached the boiling point. And with Lane Kiffin, again, this is just a little side story to what was a once proud franchise that now has lost its way in the NFL. Uh, the other part to this, though, is that there's got to be some kind of solution, you would think. But I, I think it's safe to say that Al Davis is not going to give up that team mm -hmm. while he is still alive. No. So uh, where do we see this come to an end, where this team gets back to prominence, or do we not see this for a while? Well, as long as Al Davis is there, I don't think we see it. I really don't. And, and then the, the, the bigger question is, when Al Davis moves on, who then takes over the, the franchise? I don't know the answer to that either. So I think there's an awful lot of um, uncertainty about this club. But the one certain thing that I know is that as long as Al Davis has control, they're not going anywhere. And, and I am the one thing we haven't even talked about in terms of Oakland is the players on this yep. team. It, it, it absolutely affects them. And they played hard for Lane Kiffin mm -hmm. in Week 3. They almost and maybe should have beaten the Buffalo yeah. Bills on the road to get to 2-1. Well, and the amazing part to me, and Clark nailed it on the head, in regards to the money that Al does not want to pay off Lane Kiffin. He doesn't believe in paying coaches if they're not working for him. But he is willing to overspend mm -hmm. on Javon Walker or, or Tommy Kelly. So the scale is is a sliding one for Al Davis. He can accept failures on the personnel side. He can't accept them on the coaching side. The team has played hard. They are better. Jamarcus Russell seems to be developing, although he still has a long way to go. It, it really has gotten to the point where it doesn't matter who the head coach is anymore mm -hmm. in Oakland. It just it doesn't matter. Yeah. Somehow you've got to believe into who you're playing for, but when you don't know who you're playing for, like you said, it really doesn't matter. The Raiders situation obviously will continue to unfold throughout the season. How long it continues, well, that's still 
to be decided. It, it, might, it might have actually happened just now. <laughs> <laughs> and if it did, well, this, this conversation was still relevant, and I'm glad I was a part of it. Clark Judge at Iron Eagle. I'm Jason Horowitz. Be sure to check out everything else in the end zone presented by Sony. Take care, folks.